Good morning and welcome back to yet another canal adventure. It's 7.30 a.m. on the 12th of May 2019. You join us just outside of Crick Marina. We're making an early start as we know that ahead of us is the Watford Lock Flight, which is currently operating reduced hours 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. due to water shortages. We're setting off slightly earlier than usual as we really want to passage through the Watford Staircase locks today and be moored up somewhere not too far from the car at the end of the day. We don't feel too bad about heading off at this time as we had been passed by another boat already but we're keeping it nice and slow so we don't disturb other boaters too much. It's been a few days since we were at the boat. Last night we parked the car in Watford Village, then walked along Watford Road, through half a kilometre of good grazing pasture, with loads of young cattle in it, and up the hill towards Crick. We're not exactly country file presenters, so when a number of cows start to follow us, we get a little nervous. We had driven through here earlier, and Paul said he hadn't seen anything that looked like a bull, so we'd be okay. We kept walking at a steady pace, and when we spotted the bull, Paul told me not to run. I jokingly said, I only have to run faster than you. That didn't go down well at all. I pointed out that some of the trees had protective fencing around them, and we made plans to head to them if the bull, or cows, got too friendly. We breathed a sigh of relief when we crossed the cattle grid and into a field where there weren't any cows. The light faded a lot quicker than we thought it would and when we eventually arrived back at the boat it was after dark. A Guinness was had to calm our nerves and we headed to bed as we knew we'd be having an early start. Just beyond Grace, here on the right hand side, is the famous narrowboat last Derbyshire miner, which is owned by a human called Mark and his dog called Zack. They're one of the many boats that tweet, which is how we know that they were in one of the local pubs last night. Had we actually realised this at the time, we might have popped in and joined them, but we'd had a long day and once we'd arrived at the boat we didn't fancy going back out. We slowed the footage down to real time speed so that you can all admire their wonderful narrowboat. It is, of course, a bigger staff. As you can see there are lots of boats moored up along this stretch of canal. We've been going at tick over speed for what has felt like an eternity. We are wondering if all these boats have gathered here for the Crick Boat Show which is fast approaching. Crick Tunnel is 1,528 yards or 1,397 metres long and was opened in 1814. The original route for the canal at Crick had to be altered when it was found that the rocks and sandy soil were not fit for tunnelling. This greatly affected its construction and added to the cost of the canal. The exit from Crick Tunnel appears deceptively wide as you first exit. However, you have to then squeeze under bridge number 10. 
it's very difficult to see if there is anything coming at you from the opposite direction. Thankfully, this time, there wasn't another boat coming at us. As a certain other YouTube vlogger would say, time to crank it. At 10 to 9 we arrive at the motorway bridge which is just before the top lock of the Watford 7. I can see boats ahead of us so I step off the back and take the boat for a walk. So this is what it was like for the horses in the olden days, dragging the barges along the canal. We joined a queue of four other boats, two of which were the LNBP community boats Lancelot and Guinevere that had been hired by a scout group for the weekend. The scouts were busy with a Watford Locks worksheet trying to find the answers to the questions. Breakfast was also being prepared. It smelt good. Mark booked us in with the volunteer lock keepers and we waited. Eventually it was our turn to go. Paul is at the tiller. And Mark is on lock duty. We were last here six months ago. How time flies. Watford locks consists of seven locks of which four are in a staircase configuration. The height difference between bottom and top is 52 feet and 6 inches, or 16 metres in new terms. Watford locks opened in 1814. This is the same year that Foxton locks opened too. In the early part of the 20th century, there were plans to build an incline plane similar to the one at Foxton Locks here, but these plans were shelved when Foxton Incline Plan proved to be uneconomical. The only building on the site of Watford Locks that appears to be a listed building is the Lock Keeper's Cottage. You can find out about some of the lock keepers who have lived and worked here by visiting the Watford Village website. We'll put a link in the description below. The next lock is the top lock of the staircase. It has been reset after the boat in front of us had passed into the lock chamber below. And in a moment the gate will be opened to allow Paul to carefully steer the boat into it.
What is it with us and staircase locks? We were held in this lock for a little while as the volunteer lock keepers were sorting out over-eager holiday boaters who hadn't realised they had to sign in with the keepers and had started to navigate their boat into the bottom of the staircase locks so that they could ascend the flight. They were blissfully unaware that there were boats descending. If this is the first time you have watched us going for a staircase flight of locks, you may be wondering about the order of sequence that the paddle gear needs to be operated in. Well, there's an ancient and wise saying known by canal folk that goes red before white and you'll be all right. You'll notice that I've opened the gear on the red painted post before the white painted post gear. I keep muttering to myself, red before white, red before white. As we wait for the water levels to equalise, I take the time to film the boat from up top and do a lovely panning shot so that you can see the staircase locks from where I'm standing. It isn't long before I need to put the camera away and open the gates so that Paul can move the boat into the second of the four chambers. I was surprised that the locks here hadn't been given listed status, but it turns out that these are not the original Watford locks that were built in 1814, because in the winter of 1901 to 1902 the locks were rebuilt. This considerable operation took a little over two months and was carried out by the Northern District Maintenance Gang with extra assistance, and at one time there were 160 men engaged on the rebuild project. There is more information about this and a photograph of, well, of a muddy field um, showing where the locks were about to be built again on the Watford Village website. As I wait for the water to equalise between the two chambers, I grab the camera and film yet another panning shot. It isn't long before I am put back to work opening the gates. And as I'm going to have to close them again, I take the opportunity to film from the bridge. You can see the boat in front of us just leaving the bottom lock of the staircase flight as the holiday boaters wait patiently for their turn. The gates are closed behind the boat. The boat is kept in front of the sill marker and I'll be opening the... What colour paddle gear first? That's right, the red one. You may have noticed that I only opened the paddle gear halfway at first. We found that it gives a smoother ride for the boat and the person at the tiller is able to steady it better. Turn my back and get the camera out to film something. On watching the footage back, I wonder why I filmed that and leave it on the cutting room floor. Talk amongst yourselves for a few seconds, this one is a slow drainer. I let Paul know how much the difference is in the water levels. Not long now. Slowly does it into the final chamber of this staircase flight. It doesn't seem to have taken very long at all. In real time it takes about 45 minutes. Aren't you glad we're not running this in real time?
Here we are in the bottom chamber of the staircase locks. And you'll notice that there isn't a red or white post for this lock. It's just two paddle gears mounted onto the gates. Wow, that drains quicker than the last lock. Two more locks to go for us, but you'll be glad to know that the camera stopped filming as we exited the bottom chamber of the staircase flight and we didn't notice until we were exiting the final lock. Phew, we're down. And we're off. In case you're wondering, the building on the left is the pumping station. If you want services, they're at the top lock. There's now some point, water and rubbish disposal up there. Just look at all the boats queuing to go up the locks. I actually quite like the Watford Village website. It's full of interesting stories about the canal and the people who lived and died here. There's a few ghost stories on there too if you're into that sort of thing. It's almost time for us to moor up and for you to leave us. If you've enjoyed the vlog, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you want notifications of when we next post, then hit the bell and we'll ding you to let you know when the post has arrived. If you'd like to comment on anything you've seen here or on the ghost stories from Watford Village website then comment away and we'll send a reply as soon as we can. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, see you next time.